Hello everybody and welcome back to Transfer Talk uh, here at Sweet and Sour. I normally do those the other way around. It's hello, welcome to uh, Sweet and Sour. This is Transfer Talk. I'm so excited. We finally got Scott back. We are both on the screen for the first time. It seems like weeks. It could be weeks. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm looking uh, a little bit tanned. I'm also looking very, very uh, hot at the moment. We're having a bit you know of what? a heat wave here in the UK. Oh, I was uh, I was going to say that. I was going to say that before we did the video. I was going to say you look tanned, but I didn't want to give you that ego <laughs> boost. So, yeah, you had to bring it up yourself. Guys, this is a transfer talk as usual. We try and round up everything, if you've never seen it before, in a nine, ten minute video, short burst, bite sized, and try and give you a quick update on all the transfer news or as much as possible. Uh, Scott, we're going to start straight away uh, with one of the biggest transfers of the summer in Europe, which is. Uh, Involving Arsenal, which is kind of odd, uh, and a defender, which is even more bizarre, Ben White. Yeah, that's uh, some fifty million, isn't it? The fee that's going to be paid. Um, interested to see the full details of that. Obviously, we know that they paid seventy-five mil for Nicolas Pepe against uh, across five years. Um, yeah. Definitely seems that these Super League clubs are uh, trying to say sorry to the fans by dipping their money into the pocket to try and make the fans forget about it all. I'm yeah. undecided on this. I think Ben White's going to be a brilliant signing. A little bit of question around the price tag for me, but I think he's really going to shore up Arsenal's uh, defence. And I know everyone's memeing them a little bit because they've had a disastrous pre-season. But I, th- I feel that Arsenal could be onto something this year. Um, we are going to do our Prem predictions, aren't we, eventually? But I feel like they could uh, they could really improve this year. And I think it's a really good transfer overall. Yeah, we had a bit of a disagreeing opinion on that. So do look out for a video where we do do our predictions for the summer. Um, Well, sorry, for next season. Uh, Speaking of next season, it's Barcelona who are looking like they could be in big, big trouble. We all know what's happening over there um, in Barcelona. But they have said that Van der Beek, uh, a player that hasn't featured much for Man U since his big move from Ajax, is back on Barcelona's radar if they can get their finances in order and actually sign players. So I think it's fair for Van der Beek. I think Man uh, Man U have kind of done him dirty, really. Yeah, definitely. I think United fans want to see a lot more of him. Do I feel Mm -hmm. like this transfer is going to happen? I'm really not sure. I mean, as we touched on our Barcelona video, they can't even re-sign Messi yet, which we're going to come on to next. Yeah. Um, they also can't register the the players that they've already uh, pre-signed anyway. You know, uh, Memphis Depay being one of them. Obviously, Aguero. They're still not able to register them. So, just to, this yeah. Van der Beek one's coming across as a bit of a shock. Um, yeah. And yeah. a lot of Barca players don't want to leave either, um, which ties into our next story. Of course, Messi has offered to accept a 50% uh, wage cut. Now, there's two ways of looking at this. One... This guy loves Barcelona. He wants to finish his career here. Or there's the other side of it, but Barcelona probably would have offered him a two, three-year deal max. They're offering him a five-year deal. This just seems like a really smart way of getting around it for me because that means he's going to play till Barcelona up to the age of 39, which, you know, is a bit ridiculous, really. I mean, I'd be surprised if... He keeps going that long. I mean, look, he is one of the absolute world best. Let's not forget that. But this feels to me that like they may have offered him a two or a three year deal. They've gone, look, we can only pay you half your wage. You'll be look, you'll look like a complete hero for doing it, and we'll give you five years for that. Messi hasn't even shown signs of signs of slowing down. He still scored like forty two goals, I think it was this season. Um, he hasn't it comes quickly, done it. Another five years up playing yeah, at thirty nine. He hasn't even dropped into that deeper role yet of like that Xavi position or Perlo mm. or just a pinging. But I don't know, mate. It's the best, it's the greatest player of all time. Who knows what he could be doing? Um, oh. So, oh okay, are you going to move on? Yeah, let's move. Let's move on to Brighton actually, because obviously Brighton they're going to get the fifty million for Ben White. Um, they're looking already at, yeah. looking at spending some of that. Uh, the first one is, of course, Eduardo from Celtic, the young uh, young striker. They're looking at bringing him in potentially, um, I guess, to shore up their strike force. You know, they they probably need some more goals. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah, the fifty million. It's I think it's a good signing, and you know they're they're gonna uh, they're gonna have a big chance to redesign the squad and really strengthen overall with that big sale of fifty million as well. I completely agree, and it, it seems like a Brighton transfer talk today. I can't believe I'm, I'd, I'd ever say that. Uh, but as part of that fifty million, again, staying at Brighton uh, as a replacement for Ben White, they are looking at a player that I do like the look of, and that's Nat Phillips from Liverpool. Um, you know, burst onto the scene really this year. I mean, I'm making it sound like Mika Richards here, but uh, burst onto the scene at Liverpool, obviously with all their injury woes last season. I think that'd be a very, very good signing for Brighton. I really do. He's one of the, uh, so dominant in the air, one of the best I've seen for quite a few years, just doesn't lose headers. So I think that'd be a really, really good one um, for Brighton. Staying on defenders, and um, there's a lot of talk of, uh, obviously, Varane very, very, very close to joining United, but they have had a bid rejected for Kula Bali, according to, I believe it's Gazetta in Italy. Um, now, what they've said is, what well, Napoli have said, that uh, 30 million is not the valuation that they put on the player. Seems a bit odd, though, doesn't it, Scott, to basically having Varane so close and Kula Bali, uh, uh, putting in a bid for Kula Bali, uh, who wouldn't be a a bench player. Yeah, definitely. And I think especially after the, uh, you know, the summer Maguire had as well, I think like there's no yeah. way that he's going to be the one to be dropped. Uh, Varane obviously isn't going to be the one to be dropped. Um, we've touched on it before, but maybe, you know, what could they possibly look at, be looking towards a back five? Obviously we've seen the strength of Luke Shaw, obviously in that attacking when he can get forward for both United and England. Um, that's the only yeah. way I could really describe it, but I don't really see United going, like, you know, to a back five full time. Um, I just really don't see that. But yeah, it's an interesting one. Maybe that, maybe it happened previously in the transfer window, and it's only information that's now just coming out. And obviously, they've now gone on to Varane. Um Another defender, actually, that's uh, also um, potentially going to join the Premier League. Of course, he was here last year. Uh, Quebec obviously played for uh, Liverpool on loan, yeah. didn't he? Looks like Leicester are going to be interested in him, and it looks very close. It looks very close now that they are actually going to bring him to the club. Um, obviously, need to strengthen their their team overall in terms of squad depth. We've seen them die off towards the end of the season twice in a row now. Um, you know, which is obviously massively disappointing for them. So they need to, especially with European competitions this year, they really need to. Uh, Enlarge their team, and I think that's a really good signing. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, moving on to two signings that I don't really see happening. The first one is uh, Chelsea apparently in for Lewandowski for fifty million. Obviously, they got turned down by Dortmund in regards to Haaland. I just think we're going to see a lot of top players get to linked with Chelsea now that they can't get Haaland, uh, Harry Kane, Lukaku, Lewandowski. The bid's apparently fifty million, but I don't see it. One that I don't see either is apparently Rafa Benitez is after Dwight McNeil, of course, uh, Burnley winger. And again, the fee's £25 million. Pounds. He's not a bad player. And I know football money gets you know even more ludicrous as years go on, but it's a lot of money, £25 million. So I don't see really that one happening either. Uh, Scott, yeah, one thing you... I was going to say that just quickly on both of those transfers, actually, the uh, Holland one's an interesting one. Of course, Dortmund are saying they're not going to sell him n this season. But of course, then his transfer um, buyout clause goes down massively next season. So it's still going to be one to watch. I think maybe they might sell him, maybe, if a really high offer does come in. Um and yeah, the Dwight McNeil one, I think he's a decent player. That sounds a bit of a, a hefty price tag, I guess, in my opinion. Um, let's, stay, let's stay on Chelsea. There's another interesting one that's coming about. Hudson Odoi, of course, Bayern Munich were massively interested in him. They tried to prize yeah. him away um, la last year, a couple of years, uh, the last two years, really. Um, Chelsea are potentially allowing him to go and they might use him in a swap deal. Yeah. With Koeman. Yeah. Um, interesting one. Interesting one. Of course, you know, he was, I think it was the highest bid last last time, but Bayern went in for him as 40 million. And of course, Adoy ended up signing a new deal with Chelsea, but he's dropped like, right down in the pecking order. I think his valuations probably dropped after last season too. 
I'd say so. I mean, he, he had those troubles with Tuchel when he first uh, came to the club, didn't he, where he was bringing him on. I think he subbed him off. Um, he brought him on at half-time and then brought him off um, about 20, 30 minutes later. Yeah, so right, he's had his, yeah. had his troubles with him. Um, moving on to Manchester United and a player that you like, I know, uh, and that's Jesse Lingard. Apparently, <laughs> he's part of Ollie's plans. Uh, so any West Ham fans watching uh, who obviously would love to sign him, looks like it won't happen. Yeah, interesting one that. Um, I mean, he's always kind of been a part of his plans. He's just been a bench player. So uh, I wonder what's changed that because I don't see Jesse now being happy after the first team football and how well he's done. He's going to want to be playing first team football for United if he wants to stay. But, you know, uh, definitely one to watch out for. But yeah, I mean, it's his boyhood club. So you won't be surprised if he does stay there. Absolutely. Um, should we move on to Coutinho, one of the big uh, big transfer rumours of the last couple of days? Yeah, interesting one this. I mean, there's been Coutinho has just been an odd one. He's been uh, linked with quite a few Prem clubs. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, last week was a funny one. He was linked to Wolves um, and his price dropped to like, a, it was a really low odds. And it was basically just because there was this rumour that started that he was seen in a local Wolverhampton hotel. Um, it actually turned out that um, the chef there meant to say Patrick Catrone, who is obviously a player at uh, at Wolves currently. He meant to say Catrone, and he said Coutinho instead, and that's what started the whole rumor. He, he said that he meant to say Catrone was at the Mount the Mount Hotel in Wolverhampton. I mean, fact, yeah, which is just if... hilarious. It shows how mad these transfer rumors yeah. and the odds can drop over something absolutely. Um, Ludicrous, really. But he is still linked with Wolves. He's also linked with a return to Liverpool. And then he's also linked with their local neighbours, Everton. I don't know with this one. I feel, I I mean, as a Wolves fan, I'd love to sign him. Something just tells me that Everton could be the place where he ends up, though. Yeah, over the last three or four years, Everton tend to get their marquee signing, don't they? Um, and it could be Coutinho. We reported it not too long ago, three or four weeks ago, when the yeah. Euros were in full swing. And aren't they asking for something like eighteen, twenty million pounds now? Something really ridiculous. Um, I don't know what his wages would be. Surprisingly, he's not actually pay- being paid anywhere near as much as other Barcelona stars. Um, talking about one player that for me is a star, I think this guy is still so underrated, and that's Mahrez, um, obviously at Manchester City. Uh, and Manchester City are set to offer him a new deal, the details of which uh, we haven't been told yet, but he is set to get a new deal. Getting a little bit older now, so I think um, this could be his big, you know, potentially last big contract um, in the Premier League for a top side, but I do like Mahrez. I'm glad, I'm glad he's staying in the Prem. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And he's definitely earned that new contract at City. Um, City's going to be an interesting watch, one to watch this summer. You do feel there's a marquee signing, whether that be Grealish or Kane coming or maybe even someone else. So it's going to yeah. be an interesting window in general for City. Um, to finish off for me, for me anyway, you know, the two more players that I just want to quickly mention that Everton have... Um, I say linked to, they're pretty much one of them's there for a medical as we speak. It might even be announced by the time this comes out later today. Andros Townsend and um, and Gray, obviously the former Leicester player Gray, as uh, the Damari Gray, has been linked with Everton. Um, it's an interesting one. I saw a meme literally just before recording this where, you know, it said something like, um, right, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get um, a wingers from Palace and, Leverkusen, and it's the Everton's fans relaxing, thinking it's Sahar and, of course, Leon Bailey, and it's like suddenly you just see their face, yeah. and it dawns that it's Townsend and, of course, uh, Damari Gray, which I found quite funny. But to be honest, I, it's, it's not going to excite the Everton fans, is it? But at the end of the day, I think um, squad it's depth. Decent backup. Squad it's depth. Decent. You look at yeah. their bench last season and you can see why they didn't manage to finish off you know, some games where there's quite a few frustrating draws. These extra players, you know, they could really probably change that. I'd probably be a little more excited about Andros Townsend than Damari Gray, to be honest. But that's the yeah, the the, um, the Leicester fans were really good to uh, happy to see the uh, the back end of him, weren't they? Yeah, um, yeah. when he left the club, uh, I think that's me as well. Done in terms of transfers, uh, you haven't got any more. 
No, no, all undone for me as well. So, uh, well, mate, one last thing I want to say. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one thing I want to say before I take your legendary outro away is, guys, we are starting a fantasy Premier League uh, league, uh, sweet and sour league, and there's going to be prizes um, for the first, second, and third. I think we're going to do giveaways throughout the season. Look out for that in one of the next videos. We will do a promo on it, let you know the code. Uh, and everything that you need. And it should be a lot of fun. We want to try and get as many people involved as possible. And the more people that get involved and the more people that sub, the higher the prizes will be. So, Yeah, and there will also be random prizes as well for, uh, you know, being in the league. So if you're like one of those people that plays it up till Christmas and then gets a little bit bored of it, well, it's still worth joining the league. We're still going to be handing I out prizes. That. I said we'll do random prizes. I don't okay. understand why you're just stealing my thunder. You just got to take my limelight away. <laughs> Let me finish up my outro then. You've not had an you've not had an outro from me in a week, right, guys? Um, thanks for watching. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one. Where hopefully, when I record it, it will be a touch cooler. I can't believe you did that to me. <laughs> see you guys.